What's going on my fellow rock and rollers? Don't forget to hit the bell notification button to be informed every time I upload a new video on my channel. So let's get started with today's story. Now perhaps one of the strangest things that happened in the early 90s was that the alternative rock band Pearl Jam just suddenly stopped making music videos. And their debut album, 1991's 10, was a massive success selling over 10 million copies. To promote the record, the band released three music videos for the singles Even Flow, Alive, and most notably Jeremy. They also did a video for Oceans, but that sometimes gets glossed over. Now, Even Flow and Alive were both live performance shots, while Jeremy was the band's first concept video, and it would prove to be highly controversial. It would also spell the end for the band making music videos for almost seven years. Now the first video Pearl Jam did for 10 was for the single Alive. Originally MTV was only playing the song on their program Headbangers Ball and it was also Headbangers Ball who did the first ever interview with Pearl Jam on MTV. According to a fellow named Mark Ryder who was the product manager for Pearl Jam at Epic Records, he would claim the band had a hard time appearing on Headbangers Ball because, as Heap would state, they just didn't think of themselves aligned with that kind of music. And up until that point in the show's history, Headbangers Ball focused heavily on metal bands, and since the Seattle scene was something that was new, not a lot of people knew where it belonged on the network when it first sprouted up. The video for Alive would be shot at the off-ramp in Seattle using a friend of the band named Josh Taft to direct. And the next video the band would shoot would be for the single Even Flow, which was shot at Griffith Park Zoo in Los Angeles, and the director was a guy named Rocky Schneck, who you might be familiar with as he had also worked with Alice in Chains. But the original Even Flow video never ended up seeing the day of light, and the band would waste $40,000 after not being happy with the edit. The band would go back to their friend Josh Taft, who shot another live performance video. This now brings us to the infamous Jeremy video. And according to Mark Ryder, Pearl Jam had sent him the name of five directors that the band wanted to work with on the Jeremy video. But Ryder would send the reel of a sixth director who they had enlisted, and that would be Mark Pellington. Up until that point, Pellington had worked with rap group Public Enemy, and Pearl Jam frontman Eddie Vedder would tell the director the story behind the song with Pellington remembering to author Mark Yarm, he told me the story of Jeremy, the real story of the kid. He didn't say what they were looking for, other than the band didn't really need to be performing in it, which was good because I don't like shooting drummers, the director would say. Jeremy's video concept was based on the true story of a boy named Jeremy Dell, who was 16 when he brought a gun to his school and took his own life in front of classmates who bullied him at Richardson High School in Texas in January of 1991. Of course, the video Pearl Jam had shot was highly controversial, and MTV censors wanted numerous changes to the original edit. And Mark Ryder of Epic Records explained the problem MTV had with the video, telling author Mark Yarm, in the initial video, the kid who played Jeremy takes the gun, put it in his mouth, and pulls the trigger. The band wanted it in, Pellington wanted it in, and for five days, I went back and forth with Pellington and MTV. MTV would come back to the label and the band and their management, and claimed that they liked the video, but took a hardline stance against showing the kid putting the gun in his mouth and pulling the trigger. Eventually, MTV got their way and a toned down version of the video would be released, but it only further confused people. The edited version showed Jeremy walking into his classroom, extending his arm towards his head without showing the gun, and the following scene you can see his classmates covered in blood. Some people thought he shot his classmates or the teacher instead of himself. And this brings us to one of the reasons the band stopped doing videos, which was misinterpretation and censorship. According to Jeremy's director, Mark Pellington, the misinterpretation of the Jeremy video angered frontman Eddie Vedder, and it was at that point the band became anti-video. Having to compromise and having that video be misinterpreted were the final straw for the band. Now the second reason the band stopped doing videos was because of overexposure. Eddie Vedder would discuss another reason he wanted to pull back and not do videos, telling author Mark Yarm, I felt that with any more popularity we were going to get crushed or our heads were going to pop like grapes. And Pearl Jam's manager Kelly Curtis would shed some more light telling the author, as Eddie puts it, he was sick of seeing his face everywhere. There were some great people at the label that were really supportive, and then there were people that didn't understand. And some people at the label even pushed the band to do a video for the song Black, but they didn't end up doing it. And one thing that often goes unnoticed is the monumental impact of the Jeremy video. Prior to Jeremy being released on MTV, Ten had sold about 500,000 to a million copies. 
And after the video debuted on MTV, the sales went up to 2 million copies in a flash, and soon it hit upwards of 5 million. And at the 1992 Video Music Awards on MTV, Pearl Jam would play the show and they originally planned to do a cover of the Dead Boy song Sonic Reducer, but the executives at MTV pushed the band to play Jeremy, so they gave in once again. And the following night, Pearl Jam would play the premiere party for Cameron Crowe's movie Singles, and according to Steve Backer, who was the head of promotions at Epic Records, he was at that Singles premiere party and said that Eddie Vedder was smashed beyond belief and took Backer aside and thanked him for everything the label did to get the band on MTV but also said it in a goodbye kind of way, like letting him know the band wasn't doing videos anymore. The following year at the 1993 VMAs, Jeremy would take home four awards, including Video of the Year. Hey everybody, this is Trevor, he lives. He's... No, uh, I mean, I guess you gotta say thanks. Uh... No, uh, th the real shit is, uh, I mean, I don't, if it weren't for music, I think I would have uh, shot myself uh, in the front of the classroom, you know? It, it really is what kept me alive, so this is kind of a uh, full circle. So, uh, so, to the power of music, you know, thanks. And by 1993 and 1994, Pearl Jam had shifted their attention to their follow-up records, including Versus and Vitalogy, both of which were massive sellers despite not having any videos on MTV. Now this brings us to reason number three, which is self-expression. Years later, Vetter would tell an interviewer another reason why the band refused to do videos, saying, before music videos first came out, you listen to a song with headphones on, sitting in a beanbag chair with your eyes closed, and you'd come up with your own visions, these things that come from within, then all of a sudden, sometimes, even the very first time you heard a song, it was these visual images attached, and it robbed you of any form of self-expression. While bassist Jeff Ament would say, 10 years from now, I don't want people to remember our songs as videos. Following the release of 10, the band wouldn't release any music videos until 1998 for their album Yield, for the song Do The Evolution, which was kind of ironic considering the song was never officially released as a single. So that concludes today's video guys, thanks for watching. So let me know your thoughts and whether you agreed with Pearl Jam's reasons for why they didn't want to do music videos anymore. Let me know in the comments section below. And as always, if you have suggestions for future topics, let me know them as well. If you guys want to support my channel, simply watch another video or go check me out on Patreon starting as low as $2 a month. Take care.